3,000 photographers scammed out of almost $500,000, all because they wanted to invest in a cool new Kickstarter project. That's the story that's been circulating this week, but we did a little more digging, and there's more to it than you might think. But first, let's take a moment to thank our sponsor, Squarespace. If you want your very own website, portfolio, or store, you can make it happen with Squarespace. And it's so easy to do if you can drag and drop, you can make your very own in just 10 minutes, and you can make one for free. You can get a 14-day trial, no credit card needed. Go to squarespace.com Chelsea, and use the coupon code Chelsea to get 10% off and there's a link down below in the description. December 2020, there's this cool Kickstarter project that's circulating on all the big yeah, blogs. Yeah, November, December, about that time. Yeah, it's this camera battery that gives you twice the normal capacity, and we're always running out of battery, so this sounds great, right? Yeah, and I can see why it was shared all over. Everybody wants a battery that lasts longer. But then this past week, it took a dark turn. You see, mm -hmm. Canon Rumors, one of my favorite blogs, yeah. discovered that he didn't get the affiliate payment that he was expecting. It was late. And when he reached out to the company, nobody wrote back. And <laughs> when he tried to find the CEO, nobody with that name <laughs> seemed to exist. And the picture of the CEO was actually a stock model who appeared in other Kickstarter projects as well. That's concerning. Pretty soon, DP Review, Petapixel, the biggest photography blogs did the same. Yeah, that would be a huge story. Didn't they raise almost half a million dollars? Yes, and with the way Kickstarter works, that money's gone. There's no like, oh, I'll suddenly get my money back. That yeah. company has the money and they can disappear with it. I think, okay, this seems like an easy news topic. I'll just publish sure. a video real quick. They've already written the story for me, but I did a little more digging. I found the actual CEO of the company and I also found a weird twist that I was not expecting. Kickstarter is tied to real companies and they did yeah. list a real company name and this is a legal entity that has paperwork and such. So I did find its incorporation papers in California where the company was supposed to be based, Los Angeles. It was registered by a company called KMC Accounting. And this is where it gets suspicious. The website was entirely in Chinese. And based on what I could translate, they work with Chinese companies to register them as American corporations. The paperwork pointed to KMC, but it also provided me the name of a true CEO, Li Yi Young, out of China. And it gave me their address. So now I think we have the real CEO, and indeed it doesn't seem to match the name Jeffrey Parker. Yeah, that seems pretty bad so far. You have not the face of a CEO, but a model. You have a CEO who's giving a fake name, and then they're saying that they are a Los Angeles-based company when really they're a Chinese company that incorporated in LA. Yeah, so I researched every bit of evidence I had and run into dead end after dead end after dead end, but researching their address in China turned up something. About eight other companies registered at that same address, also incorporated through KMC Accounting, and of those, three of them had current Kickstarter projects. How do you think those Kickstarter projects are going right now? I don't know. How, how are they going? Not well. Yeah. <laughs> All of them had angry comments sent from people who hadn't received their products. Some of the investors actually did indicate they received their products but weren't happy with them. Mm -hmm. So there's really mixed results. And my first take was, okay, I've done it. I've uncovered a nest of Kickstarter-based scammers in yeah. China. Come on, Chels, we're grabbing our handheld mic and we're going to their door in China. <laughs> I would like, would like to just at least leave Connecticut, but you're right. It does seem like you, you accumulated some pretty damning evidence, like fake CEO, like companies in China, housed with multiple other companies that also have Kickstarter campaigns and some of them aren't going well. I can see how you could draw the conclusion that this is seeming like a scam. And most people based on the articles from Canon Rumors and DP Review and Petapixel are also assuming this is a scam. When you go to the Kickstarter page, you'll see a bunch of angry comments saying like, how dare you, you've scammed me, I want my money back. People are trying to get credit card chargebacks, which probably aren't gonna succeed. Well, it, it might not work. They can just cancel the chargeback and then you're still out your money. And despite years of these bloggers writing free content for them, people are now attacking the Canon Rumors guy. They're attacking DP Review. They're attacking Petapixel saying, oh, you should have vetted this more. Uh, people are mad at F-Stoppers because F-Stoppers did a sponsored article and didn't actually 
uh, create a new article around how this might be a scam. They just updated their old article, which is kind of like a very quiet way to update something. Yeah, yeah, but how could you blame them for wanting to be quiet when the Canon rumors guy did the right thing? He wrote a, a full article disclosing what he thought might be happening, and everyone's attacking him. They're shooting the messenger, they're angry at him. I think he's taking the brunt of the blame, and it's not his fault. But there's another twist because we continued to dig. But first, I wanna thank our sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace lets you make a website. Without any amount of technical skill, you can create a beautiful, professionally designed website. If it's your photography or video portfolio, just grab your content in and pick a template that matches your style. If it's for your dentist office or your restaurant or any other type of business, you will look like you had a professional designer and everything will work reliably. That's why we use it for our own portfolios and other websites too. If you wanna try it out for free, go to squarespace.com slash Chelsea. And if you decide you love it, use the coupon code Chelsea to get 10% off. And thanks for supporting us, Squarespace. They also have some cool features for professional photographers, like you can make a photo area private for your clients and it's password protected so they can sign in and see their photos. Yeah, That's very I love cool. It. I think it's cool. At this point in time, people are assuming it's a scam because the Canon rumors guy did not get his affiliate money and because he has discovered that the CEO's picture is some model and like the CEO is a different person or whatever. But in the process of you researching this, the company Extra Performance updates their Kickstarter and says, hey, we're really sorry that we haven't updated you sooner. Things have been kind of crazy around here. It's like the Chinese New Year, and we've been working on getting the products ready. We've been working on manufacturing. We've had to travel. There's been some restrictions because of COVID, but we are going to deliver your products, and we'll probably get them out around like April or May, I think they said, but they are coming. Sorry for the delay. But they don't address the scam at all. There's nothing about, oh, no, that's definitely our CEO. Here's another picture of him. Sorry for any confusion. It's very weird. They, they seem to live in this bubble where none of this scam talk is happening at all, even though it's the biggest news in the community. I also get an update from the guy at Canon Rumors, and he says that Kickboosters, the affiliate company, said his payment is coming, it's just coming late. And so those two bits of evidence make you think, like, maybe they're not a scam. Maybe they're just a Kickstarter who's really poor at communicating and running a little bit behind schedule, which is par for the course on Kickstarter, right? Yeah, but it hasn't even been that long. So I think they opened the Kickstarter in November and then raised funds for a month until the end of December. And then it's mid-February. I mean, it's not like it's been six months or something. No, it's happening pretty quick. Yeah. And so I began to think, well, what if they weren't a scam? What if we tried to prove that they were legitimate? Why would they be using a name that doesn't seem to be tied to a real person? Why would they be looking like a LA-based company when they're actually a Chinese-based company? And I did find a couple of testimonials from Chinese people who discussed the need to take an Americanized or English name in order to make it easier to communicate with English-speaking people. Because mm -hmm. their names, like the CEO's name, Li Yi Young, is difficult for the English-speaking tongue. That one's actually pretty easy. That one is not too bad. Yeah. But it is pretty standard to take an American name for the sake of the Americans. So a name change isn't necessarily a sign of fraud because even though it seems different to us, it's something that's not uncommon there. And the entire Kickstarter page seems to be produced by a professional company. It's very polished. So it might be that the CEO, whoever that is, didn't even say, hey, use a fake picture and a mm -hmm. fake name. It could be the American name that they're going by and the marketing company just decided to drop in that photo because it matched their existing video. And maybe that's easier than going getting a professional photo shoot and you know, trying to make the actual CEO look better. So maybe that wasn't seen as shady for them. Maybe that just seemed like a good business practice. But what about those shared entrepreneurial offices in China? Like, why would a bunch of different companies all have the same address? That seemed really kind of suspicious. Well, one explanation is I found that in 2015, China passed a law that allowed companies to share a single address. And since then, especially entrepreneurial companies, young companies, started sharing resources like 
office space, like copiers and fax machines and answering services. And, and pictures of, of a CEO, apparently. <laughs> Maybe so. The same model. <laughs> so all of these things that seem kind of scary do have an explanation. So now we're in this place where it's like, it could be a scam or not. It could just be a misunderstanding. Yeah, it's like Schrodinger's battery. We don't know. <laughs> what is this battery? Is it happening or not? And everybody in the meantime is playing the blame game because people are blaming Kickstarter. Some people are blaming the press for not fully vetting this company and finding out if it's real. And the press is saying it's not us. We put a disclaimer at the bottom of the article like it's your job before you buy something. So who is to blame? Is the press responsible, which would include us? Are we supposed to look into companies and figure out if they're legitimate before we say something looks cool? I'll say whenever we have a product to review, I feel an enormous weight and responsibility to really thoroughly test it because I know so many people are going to spend their hard-earned cash on it. But not everybody in the press takes it so seriously, especially blogs. They need to turn out like five things a day. They have a very short turnaround. So a company can send them a well-done media kit with yeah. nice video and still photos and some press copy, and they will literally take it word for word and publish that. And if you look at F Stopper's article, it does use much of the same language as if it was copied and pasted from the original Kickstarter page. In fact, they did a sponsored post. So either it was an affiliate relationship or they were paid outright for it, I'm not sure. But if this isn't a scam and the battery ends up being great, then maybe they weren't wrong. Maybe they did accurately assess the company the first time. Because so far, the company has not done anything wrong. So how can people play the blame game and blame the press and say they didn't vet it properly if we don't know what's happening yet? Well, the press largely already blamed themselves. Yeah. Like DP Review, Petapixel, Canon Rumors. They did say, we this is looking really shady and we should have seen this before we shared it with you yeah and they did all kind of pledge to do better but at the same time they also pointed the finger back at the readers saying hey we put this blurb at the bottom of the page and it's your fault for not reading the entirety of the article and consuming the bottom and realizing that we spelled out the risks that is up to the individual to decide but i do think we're it's up to us to do some amount of research other than just reading whatever press papers a company sends to us. Here's our personal approach. We get approached by Kickstarter projects all the time saying, yeah. hey, here's this cool product, won't you share it with your audience? And I say, yes, send me one as soon as you're shipping it to consumers. I want a production copy and then they I will happily review it. And then they say, never mind. <laughs> it, we, actually, no one has ever taken me up on that. I've never gotten a Kickstarter project after it was produced. Well, because. because the point is to raise money before it exists. Yeah, exactly. But then how am I going to publicize something if I don't know if it's going to be good or not? Even if I have a pre-production copy, that's no, there's no guarantee that that's what's going to be produced en masse because yeah. they tend to hand assemble the pre-production copies with great care as opposed to sending it off to some mass-produced factory. But yeah, there's no way to actually test it to make sure it's good enough for your readers or your viewers to buy. What about Kickstarter and Indiegogo taking some responsibility? Because they, after all, they are hosting the platform. They make 5% of whatever is raised, whether the project fails or succeeds, it doesn't matter to them. Um, and people are supposed to be able to trust them. They even verify some of the people that run the campaigns. So why aren't they putting their ne necks out a little bit and saying, you know what? we? we really trust our verification process and so if this doesn't get delivered we forego our five percent to try to refund some money to people like that's not happening no that doesn't happen at all and in fact because they did verify the ceo jeffrey parker he's got a little check mark next yeah. to his name that means he should be a real person but you'd also think you could contact kickstarter and say hey He's spelling his name differently in different parts of the page, and also the picture seems to be fake. Like, yeah. can you contact this guy? Is like this a real person? I mean, maybe that's no. A they don't get back to you. There's nothing. And but that might be a detail we don't know. Maybe they got a Jeffrey Parker and hired him, and he does really exist or something. I guess we don't. We don't know that part of the process. Well, exactly. They don't communicate. They're taking five percent, but they won't even get back to the three thousand angry. Who is People Jeffrey who put their Parker? Money into it. Yeah. yeah. Don't they have a responsibility to at least reply and be like, oh, here's our validating information. Here's how you can contact the person. Well, that's what I'm saying. I do think that some part of the accountability should fall on them. Also, I looked into what happens if a Kickstarter does not get delivered. I wanted to know if the company is held accountable, if they have to pay anybody back, and they don't. 
Kickstarter says, we're not responsible, work it out with the company that you're giving money, and they should try to make it right, which means they should um, make you aware of every step of the process, they should make you aware of all of their progress, and if they don't think that they can fully fund the product they promised, they should try to de just deliver something, even if it puts them in the red, or even if it's not what they originally promised, but there's really... Should, 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 should. They're shooting should. all over the place. They're shooting. <laughs> yes, they are. And there's no one to hold them accountable. I did find a story about a guy that used Kickstarter to try to make an iPad stand and it didn't work out and he never incorporated. So people were able to sue him personally and he went bankrupt and it was, it was awful for him. It was awful for everybody. Um, but once someone incorporates, they as an individual are no longer responsible meaning that it would be your responsibility to sue them, which is expensive, nobody wants to deal with that. So yeah, it's not, that's not easy either. That's not protecting the consumer either. Well, and maybe the company shouldn't be the one responsible because my experience talking to these people is they generally mean well. Like even a Kickstarter project that fails, the people behind it wanted to succeed. Yeah. It's just they didn't anticipate how much it was going to cost to manufacture and ship. Like they didn't know about the entire life cycle of business and then they just fell down. Maybe Kickstarter should actually have a process where they can hire an investor to go over these companies and see if the person trying to run them even has a possibility of making it viable. Because I don't understand how these people with limited experience are supposed to bring like a half a million dollars worth of product to fruition. It's difficult. Yeah, and the whole Kickstarter thing is like, oh, screw the old investment style where you have to go to the bank and they check out your business plan and look yeah. at your books to see if the entire process is viable. Like, screw that. We're going to crowdfund this. But like, I think there's some value in actually making sure that the person has a plan to uh, manufacture, distribute, support this thing because often they don't. And they, it seems like most Kickstarter projects run late. I don't have statistics on it, but so many of them run late. The statistics I found were a bit old, but a lot of them run late, but they do say most of them are actually completed. Yeah, well, the Yashica Y35 with it, that, we, that we reviewed was a completed Kickstarter project, but we felt that the end product was a total piece of garbage. It feels like um, a toy. Oh my God, this button is fake. That is so corny. Oh. God, this is my childhood Christmas all over again. See this little door of doom? God, this thing is cheap. Uh-oh, now it's not working. It broke already! Look! Oh my God, you piece of shit! It was awful. It was very expensive for what it was. It was like a toy. I think that the person that is actually bearing the brunt of the responsibility are the people funding the projects, you and me, the consumers, the people that think that they're shopping because Kickstarter is not a shopping site. You're not going on and buying a product. You're signing up to support an idea, and if that idea doesn't come to fruition, you pay the price, and there's not that much you can do about it. Look, I tried to invest in a $25 coffee jewel like 10 years ago, and I never got it, and I've never invested in Kickstarter again. Yeah, and my take on it is twofold. One, all of you watching, you should never put any money into a Kickstarter. Just be patient. If it's going to ship, it's going to ship. And then you can see honest, objective reviews of the actual production product. And then you can put your hard-earned money down. There's no rush to get this gadget. You've been living okay without it. And the other thing is I think every blog, every YouTuber should stop reviewing Kickstarter stuff. That's been our take this whole time. We just wait until it's shipping and that's okay. We survive. It's okay. You don't get the easy clicks on some catchy new gadget that doesn't exist, but at the same time, you're not putting your viewers at any risk. Yeah, that's true. I, I don't think I would ever uh, publicly promote a Kickstarter, but I will say there was an exception for when I supported another crowdfunding product, and that was a friend of mine. And it was a very like low goal. I think it was only ten thousand dollars, and she was mostly asking her friends. And I know her, and I trust her, and I believed in her idea. And I thought, you know what? Even if it never happens, I support this person enough that I want them to have this experience, and I'm willing to lose. I think it was fifty dollars, and so I think that that's different. Well, that's a great example. By taking away this sort of free mass publicity of blogs and YouTubes, we aren't killing the idea of crowdfunding projects. No. This one particular 
example worked out, even though they didn't get posted on Petapixel, right? Yeah. So we don't have to throw out the baby with the bathwater. We can still do crowdfunding without the sort of unjustified big pu publicity. That's true. And I do like the intention of Kickstarter, but I think the execution is really poor and that you're setting people up for failure when you let them raise far more money than they've ever managed in their lives on making a product that they've never made before. It's just... It's, <laughs> it's not how business works. No. And when we started our business, like we made mistakes, but they were on a smaller scale because when you gradually grow your business, you're gradually making more and more products. So your first order might be a hundred. And if there are mistakes, it's not as expensive as if your first order is thousands. And so it, it, you know, it becomes a really huge gamble. It's kind of an all or nothing game. And I find that a little scary. Yeah, and we're still going to get a steady flow of gadgets. I wouldn't worry about that. Yeah. There's plenty out there. In the comments down below, I'd like to hear what you think. Is this a scam or do you think this is actually going to ship? Who is responsible if it is a scam? Is it the company or the bloggers or do people uh, have to be responsible for their own money? Caveat emptor. Are we all a little bit responsible? Tony, what is your personal feeling? Do you think that this is a scam? My hunch is it's legit and these batteries are going to ship, but then I think they're not going to be as great as they've been touted. <laughs> I, I think the company's well-intentioned because I think if they wanted to take the money and run, they could have probably just done that already. So we'll see. I guess we have a few months and we'll find out if they're going to try to at least make this work. Yeah, if they are well-intentioned, then I feel bad that so many blogs have implied that they might be scammers yeah. because it's definitely led to a general sentiment that they're scammers and you can see that on their Kickstarter page by all the people that are pissed off at them. Like, if that's unjustified, then that itself was a bit of a miscarriage of justice, right? Yeah, yeah, that would be very unfortunate if they just made good on it and everything was delivered on time, but they just got a bunch of bad press about their company. So you do kind of have to be careful. I do think that the blogs that updated, they never said it's definitely a scam. I think they just said it's possible. We don't know yet, which is what we're kind of saying now as well. Um, thank you Squarespace for making this podcast possible. You can get your very own Squarespace for free for 14 days, no credit card needed. You don't have to remember to cancel. Just try it out. You just drag and drop your pictures. It looks so good. We've made like seven of them. We truly like them. And if you want yours to go live so you can share it and show off your cool pictures, go to squarespace.com slash Chelsea, use the coupon code Chelsea and get 10% off. And that's down in the description below. And if you like our podcast, you can get it anywhere podcasts are available, or you can subscribe to our YouTube playlist of our podcast and see like a hundred of them. And I know it's like in between podcast seasons because I'm low on podcasts right now. We don't have a season. We just go all year. We'll always have a fresh stream of content for you. And uh, you can listen while you do your dishes or whatever. So thanks so much. Bye. Thanks, bye.